Warning, this show contains adult language, so viewer and listener discretion is advised. Welcome to another edition of Up and Edit. I'm your host, Adrian Babishoff, and if you're new here, welcome as well. And if you're wondering what the show's about, it's entirely dedicated to improving quality of life for both people and planet through liberation and independence, moving you from surviving to thriving and living life on your own terms. Today's episode 128, Complete Lifestyle Redesign the Money. Uh, first of all, excuse the background noise, that's my mobile studio, my F350, 7.3 liter diesel truck. I'm on my work commute back home. Really sweaty for those of you watching. I just got off the roof. Man, I'm getting my ass kicked over here. Uh, but we started off with part one of, a, of complete lifestyle redesign, and I, learned, I, I pretty much realized that I screwed up. We should just do uh, complete lifestyle redesign, and then we're going to hit each subject matter because within 15 minutes, it seems like it just eats up really, really fast. There's a lot of important information that we need to share here. And uh, for those of you just tuning in and didn't hear the intro, which is the, the part one, I'm doing this series because I feel like we need to set some stuff. We have, we have information strewn throughout this podcast, but the show, uh, but I wanted to start over again and take it one by one. Uh, that way they're all uh, in, in column, in line. And I think that people should start with uh, episode one uh, and or ep- I'm sorry, the, uh, um, the part one and then just keep going through. It's going to be a series of complete lifestyle redesign blank. Uh, and I'm going to take, try to take you on the most important details first to, to second to third and so forth. So today it's about the money. Let's get into it. How much do you have? This is something very important for people to assess, to figure out how much money you have. If, you're go, if your ship's going down or you want to get yourself in a safety zone, you need to know what you have to work with. So um, let's take a look at uh, things like savings. A lot of people I don't think even have any savings. Maybe they just have a few you know, a couple hundred bucks in the bank. That's, you got to add that up. We need to know exactly where you stand. We need a complete makeover here, guys. So find out what you got in your your savings. And then next thing we're going to do, we're going to look at uh, your liquid cash. Liquid cash is things that you can sell and just get cash like now, uh, instantly. Uh, You got an extra vehicle. You got a whole bunch of extra like appliances and all kinds of tools, whatever have you. Anything that you can sell where you can make some money. Um, you want to take a look at that. You want to put that into account. Credit cards is another thing. Now, you don't really have this money, but I've had credit cards for many, many years. I just never really used them. Uh, I think I have upwards to somewhere around $15,000 of credit, which isn't much. I know most people have a lot, uh, but you want to figure out what your credit is just to know that you have that for security reasons. So we want to, money, as we said, is what makes the world go round. Take it away from people if they don't think that it is and then see how fast worlds the, 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 your world starts to suffer and you start to go, whoa, this really sucks. So in preparation for uh, money, we just need, we need to really understand what we've got. I've given you guys just three examples there. I know there's a couple more, but we ain't got time to go into all of them. Speaking about time, I'm only giving the basics. I don't want to give too much information that's going to confuse people if they're not very familiar with doing something like this. So I just gave like really some of the most basic uh, but the, uh, some of the most important. Now, uh, how much do you project to have is our next question. Uh, those of you working a nine to five job, this is very simple for you guys. Just take your net. There's a difference between gross. Just because you make $20 or $15 an hour doesn't mean that you have $15 an hour. Uh, we need to find out what your net is, what you bring home after taxes. We also need to find out uh, what you, what you kind of need to do, and this one's very difficult. This is the ghost expenses section, and this is where you're going to pay taxes on your electricity, your phone, your groceries. Oh, depending on where you live, this is all going to be different. So you need to take accountability of just because you have, say, $1,000 in the bank, you probably got more. You could probably bet on about 7 to 8%, just take that off. So probably about $70, $80, uh, I'd say, say take off about 100 bucks, and that's going to play it safe. That's how much it's going to cost you to actually use that money right now. Um, so yeah, we need to project. Those of you who are working for yourself like me, you're able to uh, project possibly how much money you can make depending on what the economy does. Uh, but like for me, I can project on all the jobs I sell, how much do I need to make, how much do I want to make. So I could project like, hey, can I get this quota? Can I make, uh, say, $100,000 this year? Uh, that feels very comfortable to me. Uh, maybe not because then I have to, it puts me in a whole new tax bracket. So you can kind of assess, project where you want to be, what feels comfortable. And I would say 
uh, people are working nine to five uh, and they're si side hustle, hustlers, uh, entrepreneurs, business owners and stuff like that. To me, even if you made your quota, to me, I would make as much as possible right now just in case things start to go south. It's not going to hurt you any. It's going to take up some of your time, but you're definitely going to have some extra money in the bank. So don't just stop at the quota. Uh, so it's really nice to be able to project what you have. Um, now, how much can you afford to save? And the reason why I ask this question and ask you, you to ask yourself this question is I think that a lot of people, they don't really have, uh, like, they don't make enough to actually uh, save any money. They're actually pretty, uh, they're, they're preoccupied with, uh, oh, dang it, I just got right through a little red. And I had a cop behind me, sorry about that. Uh, a lot of people, they don't make enough to actually save. They're barely making ends meet. So what's happening with them is that they're not living their wages. You'll need to scale down. Once we, you know how much you've got saved, once you know how much you're making, now you gotta look at your expenses and things like that. And that's when we started talking about uh, uh, budgeting. And I did a whole show. Let me know if you guys want me to do it over again. I'll see if I can scrounge just some, some extra new material that I didn't put in there. But when you can project how much you're going to make, you can project how much you have, and then you can, you can look at your expenditures uh, you have control of how much money you spend. Maybe some of you don't have enough control over how much money you make. But when you know what you're spending, that gives you an idea. Of, are you over overextending yourself? Are you spending more than you're actually making? And if you find yourself that you're in this position and you can't really save, I think that you really need to downsize and you need to pull back and you need to stop doing eating out. You need to stop with the coffees. You need to really, really take an account. I've given a lot of free information on the show, how to make every moment count. Uh, only go grocery shopping once a week. Get everything. If you didn't happen to get the milk or something, substitute it for something else. You know, don't just run to the store just to get milk. You know, that was a $15 gallon of milk, you know, and the time. So, yeah, you really need to re rethink things. And, uh, man, this can really get very uh, intricate and this can get very thick. Uh, I think that we do need to take our time, go slow in this, and really point out the particulars. So, um, how much do you have? How much can you afford to save? Uh, I think this is going to go to the same with people who own businesses. If you're a side hustler, uh, like myself, you can actually project. Uh, uh, if you've done everything, like, if, here's the thing, guys. Uh, both blue-collar workers, business owners, entrepreneurs. Uh, when you when you know exactly how much it is that you spend, uh, it gives you a really really good idea to project and, and to to tell the future basically. So I know by live and by living way below my means, even though I make really good money, I don't act it. I act way below my wage, and I'm saving. I'm waiting for things to crash so I can capitalize on a really really good deal. Uh, you know, I don't mean harm by anybody, but I know I would be doing good for people if they can't. You know. I'd love to give them all my money, but let's be realistic here. If they're losing their house and the bank takes it over and things like that, I want to buy it at a, a very a discounted cheap price. But I'm able to project that way because I know uh, how much to budget for. I know what my expenditures are. I'm aware of such things as ghost expenses. And like I said, I, 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 I did an Instagram video yesterday live. Uh, that was, I think this is what, the May 18th, I think, the day I'm recording this. But I'm eating oatmeal in the back of my truck. You know, I'm acting like I'm poor, but I'm saving like I'm rich, if that makes sense. And it really, really brings me out, uh, gives me that time to be able to assess and think of things like I'm sharing with you guys today and actually to be here today. Um, I think one of the biggest things that we need to uh, move on moving forward is to learn assets and liabilities. So, uh, man, this, this could be a really, really big one. Do yourself a favor and really get a, go get a book on it. Watch some YouTube videos, uh, but I'm going to try to explain as best as I can in simple terms here for those that don't know. I promise you, if you already know, I'm not going to make this too long. Uh, assets are things like that, that pay you back, right? That hold value. Uh, liabilities are things like, believe it or not, you would think a car is an asset. Well, a lot of people don't know that as soon as you buy a brand spanking new, new car, and you drive it off the lot, I think it automatically, automatically depreciates by anywhere from 10 to 15%, right? You lose a couple thousand dollars. If those wheels just touched the real road and you did a U-turn and, and brought it back, they'd say, no, nah, that, that car that was worth 50, that's, we'll give you like a, I don't know, 45 for it now. So that's how, that's how crazy, and that's a liability. A car, yes, is an asset in that it takes you, gets you to and fro from work, 
hopefully everything new in my opinion is built like shit but hopefully it gets you to, to uh, work and things like that but the tires are wearing out there's a lot of things that are going bad in this thing whereas a cheap car that you can buy an oldie but goodie in most circumstances will do the same job you know something in the middle say a hundred and twenty thousand you know eighty thousand miles on it you can get it for half the price a really good car very rare that it'd break down you know uh I bought my ex-wife, I call her the Xbox, she, uh, we got her a Toyota 4Runner. That thing has been a champ, it's a 2002, it's got like almost 200 and something thousand miles and it's still rolling, nothing major has ever given out on it. Uh, so yeah, that, that to me is more of an asset than a, a brand new car, but assets are more things like, uh, I would say, real estate. And it's not, I, I'm getting kind of technical here though, but uh, I think a lot of people who believe that real estate is an asset and don't kind of see it as still somewhat I don't think it's explained in its entirety yes it's an asset but what's more of an asset is actually the land the the house itself is kind of a liability the roof's gonna go out the plumbing needs gonna gonna need to get fixed worst case of all the termites might start eating up all the wood you see where we're going with this all silently in the dark these are all things that start to, to uh, depreciate so we have uh, uh, I really think you guys should get into financial uh, terminologies to learn things like this. There's appreciation. Just think of it like, ah, well, that was such a nice gesture. I really appreciate it. That was a good thing. And depreciate, maybe like depression or something. Depreciation is, some, is things like that. They depreciate, they lose value. So anything that loses value in my definition of an asset, something that loses value but, and, but doesn't make you money is a liability. Now maybe you purchase something that is starting to deteriorate and, and uh, uh, you know, lose its value but it's making you more money than what it's worth now that's an asset right so kind of like a house i guess you can paint it and you know do some things to it to, to make it more valuable so assets and li liabilities and the only reason i'm bringing this up is that i think that once we have a clear understanding of assets and liabilities then it becomes clear of where, what should we do the question of should i buy something or not where do i go put my money how do i spend my money what do i save my money even for is to invest in assets, things that are going to that create you cash flow. Uh, so I hope I've explained that one in basic, uh, uh, simple terminology. And I hope that people who actually think that things like a house is actually an asset, uh, not quite. Let's look at what's happening right now with, with uh, building materials. Super, super expensive. I'm so glad that I'm not a homeowner at this, at this particular junction, uh, although I think I can get by. But the price of materials is so expensive, this is not the time to be building, repairing, doing anything. Uh, this is the time to sit back and wait. <laughs> you know, plywood is went from uh, $11 a sheet. I just bought one today for like $65 a sheet, closer to 70 with taxes. So everything's going up. Uh, I believe it can't stay up that high forever. That, that would just ruin the economy. All right, let's move forward from assets. we got a little bit more time here. What value uh, do the things you own uh, really have uh, so this is going to be a crazy one if you had to sell everything uh, which is a good thing I think I recommend that you guys would assess remember we talked about how much do you have go and look around if just let's just pretend because this gives you a general idea of oh shit we got to get the fuck out of here red flag it right pull the, the ripcord on the parachute if I was able to sell everything that I own all my tools um, excess clothes all the things that you hold dear put a value on them and be realistic you know the monopoly board and stuff like that my playstation you know how much would i uh, uh be able to sell those things for and what to your amazement is all of these things are barely worth jack shit and these are the things that a lot of us have been stressing upon oh my god i hope i don't lose everything think about it, if you had a yard sale now some of you guys may have some really good stuff uh, but I think in a yard sale, you'll probably get maybe a quarter to an eighth. I've done plenty of yard sales, plenty of experience moving. I've moved, I don't know how many times in my life, more than probably, I'd say 20 to even 30 times. So yeah, and I never got nowhere near everything that I sold. And then the, the thing that I look at is, is, is what we put importance on. A lot of these things, they own, they own us. The things you try to end up owning, you know, owning, end up owning you, as the saying goes. So... It's a negative, but it is a positive. It's a negative for you to look and just go, wow, shit. Oh, man. My refrigerator, all that stuff I really worked for, the fucking 
carpet, the duvet, all those things, are those essential to my survival? You know, did, did it really pull the room together, you know? <laughs> and now you come to that, that beautiful coffee table, uh, and then you come to find out, wow, I really spent a whole bunch of money on nothing. And I want you to ask yourself uh, on these things. Remember we are talking about assets and liabilities. Um, what purpose do these things serve? My first one, I've only got three here. Does it make life easier? And I don't mean that a coffee table that you come home and you put your feet on, uh, does that make your life easier? Uh, maybe to a degree, but I'm talking more about things like a, uh, I always refer to, I don't know why, like a blender that blends up, uh, it has multiple purposes. I got a really good one, you know, you can make uh, uh, soup out of it, you can make smoothies, ice cream, sorbets, and nut butters and all those things. Is it really, do I really need something like that? Does it have any value? I look and I say, yes, this is a very powerful tool. The, the one that I have, I used to be a vendor. I'd sell, uh, you know, blended lemonades and, and iced mochas and stuff like that. Spent over $1,000 on this thing. Had it for probably about 25 years now and it's still kicking. Bought really good shit. It's an asset. Uh, if I wanted to sell it, I don't think I'd get that amount of money nowadays. I don't know. I'd have to assess it. But that is something that actually makes my life easier because I can blend up all my breakfasts. Uh, or my lunches, I, I do intermittent fasting. All my lunches are made within probably about 20 minutes of time uh, for the whole entire week. I make all my banana, chocolate, peanut butter smoothies and I put them in my fridge. That's uh, my D, uh, DC powered fridge. It runs off a solar panel here in my truck. So I've got breakfast, it's saving me money. It's good for the environment. I'm uh, uh, very getting very healthy because of it. That's how I've been able to keep my weight down and everything and it makes life, I save a lot more time having to go to a restaurant to go buy a burger or cheeseburger so all the way across the board yes it's made my life easy but the coffee table the I don't even own a coffee table actually since we're on the subject of the table I got one of those folding tables out or, or folding table it folds actually half like a suitcase what I like about it, it's telescoping because I'm six foot four I'm handicapped I can raise up where I don't even have to bend over so when I go camping uh, again stacking functions this thing works as, as a camping table for my stove uh, it works as a seedling table it's plastic on top uh, I, I know if anybody's following me, you know I hate plastic, but you got to do what you got to do with this one. So I'm able to do my seedlings on it. I could do presentations. At home, it serves as a coffee table. I take it all the way down to the ground and I put my feet on it. Me and my daughter color and coloring books. I have that one table and wherever I go, that goes with me. So these are the things I look at. That, uh, what's bringing you value? A little, a pretty yin and yang uh, carpet, a uh, fancy poster on the wall, you know, a chandelier, all of those things. How essential is that to your survival? And, and is it really making your life easier? Invest in the things that are going to make your life easier, if, especially if you're going to restart, you're going to reprogram your mind, you're going to reinvent yourself. Get in the habit of finding things that actually make your life easier. Uh, the other one we already spoke about, does it make you money? Uh, my my uh, uh, blender, that could make me money. It's the same blender they have in Starbucks. I can go right now, well, of course, you know, with COVID and everything, but I could literally start a little lemonade stand, uh, you know, on the side of the road with the proper permits and stuff like that, nice mochas, or get myself a little, invest in a little uh, uh, vending uh, cart or something. So yeah, I can definitely, those things can make me money. The things you got to look at, a lot of the assets, uh, and they don't all have to make you money, but it sure is nice when you're able to stack that function into them. You're going to go buy yourself a power drill. Uh, my book, don't go buy a cheap little tiny, uh, you know, uh, Home Depot one or Kmart, you know, or Walmart, uh, that's probably like, what, $19? Get yourself something decent. Get yourself somewhere in the middle or something really good, like a, uh, well, I'm not sponsored by anybody, but, you know, some of the better brands out there, you'll see them, the cordless drill will be like 150 bucks, but you'll have this thing for the rest of your life, you know? They're really good, and, and that thing can make you money. You can become a drywaller, you can repair things. I even use mine to do uh, my mechanics, so it saves me money. You, they have little bits that you can put sockets on. Uh, I've got uh, you got to have an impact uh, drill for that though. Um, last one I have uh, here is: Would you die? Would you be harmed, or would you die if with or with, uh, uh, without these things? So to take the stress off people, uh, if you had to abandon all of this stuff, would your life get worse? Would you? Would you die with it? If you are, you should definitely keep those things. Uh, if your life's, if you're not going to be, if you're like minimally harmed and you don't have the capacity to keep something, get rid of it. Because trying to keep those things will end up harming you in the end 
And I believe sometimes when you get too much attached to physical things that they can actually kill you. They can actually take your life through uh, stress. It's scientifically proven that stress is a silent killer and it's one of the most horrible things that a lot of us go through. And a lot of that stress is because of money. It's because of things that we own and the fear of losing losing ourselves, losing the things that we own, having to start over. And you know what, guys, on that note too, I like to tell you guys, I've started over probably about five times in my life. I mean, we're talking almost down to nothing. Um, built myself back up. So I know that it's possible. And that's why I say I'm your ambassador for the alternative lifestyle design because guys, I'm living it. I'm not no fucking snake oil sales guy that's out here trying to sell you shit. I ain't selling fucking nothing right now. All I ask of anybody is if I bring you value, give me a like, subscribe, review, or tell somebody about this podcast if you think that it's great so that we can keep the show going so we can help people out. Um, that's why I do the live Instagram so you guys can actually see. I'm eating oatmeal and I look like a fucking bum. If I was sitting on the sidewalk at a park dressed in my clothes that I work in, all sweaty, dirty, and everything, I'll bet you someone would drop a, a quarter in my oatmeal cup, you know? I'm <laughs> thinking I'm begging for change. You know, but real, but few people realize that I'm pretty well set up. I'm pretty well, if I want to, to go invest in buying myself a home. Uh, I've got a down payment. I've got emergency funds. I've got my life completely set up. But, but in contrast to most people that I know, the majority of people, nowhere near that. Nowhere near that. Um, so guys, that's the show. I know there's a hell of a lot more. What I usually do is I listen to these shows myself and then it sparks up things where I'm like, oh, I should have said that. I should have done that. Um, if I think of stuff that, that's really going to be uh, 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 good for you guys, extra things, I'm going to go ahead and place those on the private Facebook group at Up and In It. And uh, I usually do like a 10-minute or, or a 5-minute show there. Uh, maybe I might do them live on Instagram. I try to get like right in my notes, like all the extra things that I wanted to tell you guys because it's so fun making these things. On my end, it's like you get through and you start writing down a bunch of notes, like what you think is important, what you've done. And like, and it's, I don't know, it's pretty neat. It's pretty fun. Uh, but you can't think of any everything all the time. So, <clears throat> oh, guys, I've spoken until I'm ready to start coughing here. I would really love to do for you guys to, as I said, subscribe and like this channel because if I get enough going and I see that people like it, I have no idea on the podcast end if anybody's even listening. The numbers are all over the place. It says we got people from all over the world, but I don't know how many there are of you. If there's one, two, five, ten, thousand, it says like we're getting just under a thousand a, a month. So that's good, but it's there's no way to really calibrate that thing because they don't have any way of measuring it. So it's be nice to hear from you guys. Nice to see you guys subscribe. Go to the up and in it. Uh, uh, dot com at the website. You can subscribe there, and you can even I forgot to tell people this is uh, you can actually leave me a voice message. Leave me a voice message, message and I'll figure out how to, to uh, answer your stuff. It's all free. It's all there at upandinit.com. There's the, the upandinit show at gmail.com. Everything's down below in the description, so check it out. Uh, always extra stuff on Up and Init on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and anywhere where I can do the podcast. As I always say, guys, go out there and have yourself a near-life experience. Don't lose your muchness. Carry on the fire. Human up. Live it, love it, own it. And bone it, my friends.